Arguably, there's four big space games currently. Star Citizen, No Man's Sky, Elite Dangerous, and EVE Online. It'd be great to know which one of these has the most interest in it, wouldn't it? Well, thanks to our buddy Google Trends, we can actually figure this out. Also, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. More about them further into the video. So, let's start with No Man's Sky. So, we're using Google Trends here, and we're going to look for that particular uh, product. We're going to look for that name. We don't want the search term. We want the game itself. So, this is interest in No Man's Sky survival game right across all of Google. It's shown us the information for the past 12 months in the UK region. And look at that, the most interest exists in Wales, followed by England, less interest slightly in Scotland, and even less interest in Northern Ireland. Now, if you've ever wanted to uh, research how much interest there is in a particular topic, then Google Trends is where you want to go. What we can see here is normalised data. Back in early 2021 or mid-2021, we can see there was a bit of a spike in interest in No Man's Sky. That moment in time was the highest amount of interest in the topic in this particular time period, so therefore it gets a score of 100. Everything else within that time period is then marked comparatively to that moment. So it's not about how many players are actually playing the game, but how much collective interest there is in that particular topic. So that's for the last 12 months in the United Kingdom. Let's check for worldwide. So we can see a very similar type of graph here, giving us the same sort of impression. Uh, comparatively, uh, most interest is happening in Canada. So therefore, if you were going to make any No Man's Sky content and target towards Canada, then that would perhaps be your best audience. But pretty much any of the Western world here is a very good target for that. Now let's increase the time period to five years. And look at that massive spike there in, what's that, around about mid-2018, I'd say. Yep, 2018, a huge spike there in interest in a No Man's Sky. All the other spikes that have come after that would pretty much coincide with any of the game's expansions and other updates. So yep, we can see when there's increased interest, and we can see when interest also drops off. No Man's Sky overall are very stable. In fact, in the past few months, it seems to be doing very well. Let's check another game then. We're going to go for Star Citizen this time. Uh, again, we want to look for the video game, not the search term, just so we can get a fair comparison one to the other. So, Star Citizen interest in the United Kingdom over the past 12 months. We're going to change this to worldwide in just a moment. But immediately, you can see there has been an increase in interest over the past few months. There's going to be a few reasons for this. One is development news. There's been various things going on with Star Citizen, including a free flight weekends. But there's also been a huge increase in activity in content being produced for the game on YouTube. Now, if we look over a five-year period, we can see the game does very well overall. A lot of frequent spikes here coinciding with patch updates, free flight weekends, as well as other news. It's also worth pointing out that the current spike in interest in Star Citizen is the highest it's ever been. Although that said, the spike is also on the downward slope there as well. Now here is at least one contributing factor to that recent spike. A massive increase in content being produced for Star Citizen over on YouTube. This is just for the past month or so, and there's a huge load of different content creators, many big channels, actually making videos for the game. So this collectively is driving interest in Star Citizen and causing the Google Trends there to have a bit of a spike. So, of course, this is not an indication of how many people are playing Star Citizen, but it is an indication of how much global interest there is in the game. A fantastic way, then, to compare both data and interest all across the internet. And talking of the internet and data, nowadays I travel quite a lot because family lives over 300 miles away. And when I'm not with my family, I'm often visiting other counties or national parks. It means I'm dependent on a lot of public Wi-Fi. And being the paranoid sort I am, this really doesn't sit well with me. NordVPN then gives me some comfort knowing that I'm making it at least a little more difficult for anyone to snoop. It's super easy to set up. And once a VPN is enabled, I tend to feel much more comfortable when accessing the internet in public. Now, VPNs are of course useful for many different things. And being a gaming YouTuber, one thing I see mentioned again and again is a problem with game updates. Some game update managers can get throttled by certain ISPs, and this limits the download speed, making updates take a lot longer than they should. Turns out that some people can get around this by using a VPN. As NordVPN doesn't have any data or speed limitations, this is a very useful feature. 
Take a look at the link in the video description for an exclusive deal on NordVPN or simply head to nordvpn.com forward slash obsidianant. Moving on to our third big space game, Elite Dangerous. Again, clicking on the video game option rather than the search term to keep the comparison equivalent here. And once again, looking at the United Kingdom over the past 12 months looks pretty stable, not too shabby. A bit of a spike around Christmas time there, end of the last year. Let's move over to Worldwide. And again, we can see perhaps a slight decline there in the past couple of months. Jumping over to the five year mark though, we can see, well, things are looking somewhat different. A lot of spikes there over the years, often due to the game's updates and other in-game events and news. But the big drop comes around about the middle of 2021. That was the release of Elite Dangerous Odyssey. We can see there was somewhat of a recovery around about the end of last year, but unfortunately it didn't hold. An interest in Elite Dangerous, uh, well, is unfortunately now at an all-time low. Let's see what the story is like for our fourth big space game, EVE Online. Again, comparing the online game itself. And once again, we're here with the United Kingdom perspective. We're going to change that straight away to worldwide and change the time frame to uh, five years, I think. Now, interestingly, we can go quite a bit further with EVE Online due to the game's age. But for now, let's just focus on the five year window. And very similar to with Elite Dangerous actually, we can see the game appears to be in a bit of a decline and if you're here and listen to the community for that game, you can see that does seem to be the case. In fact, the heyday for EVE Online, its golden age, it seems to be between 2006 and around about 2010, maybe 2011. Since then, things have been on a slow decline and I know CCP is pulling all the stops out to try and get a bit of recovery here. Right, so let's see four big space games individually. Let's see how they stack up against each other. We've got No Man's Sky right here. We looked at that right at the beginning of the video. Let's see how that compares to Star Citizen. Okay, so overall, it's very clear that there's a lot more interest in No Man's Sky than there is in Star Citizen. Although that said, in recent times, Star Citizen seems to be doing fairly well. Now, unfortunately, that view is a little bit too far out, a little bit difficult to see what's going on there due to this small size of the graph. So. Let's look at a nearly two year view here. Yeah, that's a two year view just about. So yeah, quite clearly No Man's Sky is the space game with the most interest out of these two. Makes sense, right? After all, uh, more or less a mainstream game. Star Citizen pretty much still a niche game in its own little way, although one that's generated huge sums of money. At any rate, let's add Elite Dangerous into the mix. Now in the first half of the graph here, we can see that Elite Dangerous was certainly having more interest than Star Citizen, but that has switched around in recent times. No Man's Sky though, is still the game by far with the most interest. Now, talking of interest, look at the Little World map down the bottom. Elite Dangerous, very, very popular in Russia, it seems. And of the total interest for these three games, 45% is for Elite, and just 13% for Star Citizen. So, could we perhaps intimate from this that Russia is a big market for Elite Dangerous? Maybe. Elsewhere in the world then, uh, again, No Man's Sky, by far the title, with the most interest. Okay, so let's add our fourth game into the list, EVE Online. Again, selecting the game option, not the search term. Let's see how that stacks up. Okay, so on the world map, the only country that's green for EVE Online is Ukraine. Hmm. Up here we can see EVE Online is perhaps comparative to Elite Dangerous in terms of its current interest. Meanwhile, whilst Star Citizen is just passing its one of its spikes, it's still way above both Elite Dangerous and EVE Online in terms of interest. At any rate, let's add some of the lesser known or the slightly smaller space games into this list to see how things compare. X4 Foundations, a very, very good game by the way, at really proving that quality is nothing to do with popularity. Despite being the game with the least interest on this list so far, X4 is a very, very good space game. Let's swap X4 out for Dual Universe. So unsurprisingly, not too much going on with Dual Universe at the moment, very likely due to its early access nature. And talking of early access titles, what would be another one? Uh, that would be Everspace 2. So let's put that into the list here. There we go, another game still in early access, still yet to fully release, and still a little bit right down there in terms of interest. Not too surprising, but again, really proving that quality is nothing to do with popularity. Everspace 2, 
a very, very good space game, as I've said before. Excellent space shooter, in fact. Probably uh, one of the best single-player space users out there. Let's have a look at Space Engineers. Ah, Space Engineers, comparable to both EVE Online and Elite Dangerous. Quite a surprise there. So, there we have it. A look at the most popular space games currently on the market. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. What space games do you like the most? And does this chart reflect your personal opinion? Or is it way off base? I'd love to hear from you. Do let me know below. Also, thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. You can find everything you need in the video description. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time.